Instagram is killing parkour. And I know that sounds a little bit over the top, but hear me out. Instagram has totally changed how parkour works. And the audience for parkour on Instagram is massive. And in 2019, the first ever parkour athlete to hit 1 million followers was Pasha the Boss. However, today we're going to look at the effect that Instagram has had on parkour as a culture. Before we get into it, we need to look at how parkour video content was shared online before Instagram. Arguably, parkour was the first ever sport to grow off the back of the internet. The founders of the sport, David Bell and Sebastian Fukan, set out to spread parkour across the world. In 2003, a show by the name of Jump London was released. Two years later, in 2005, Jump Britain was released as well. These two shows are what inspired many of the original parkour athletes in the UK to begin parkour. That same year, in 2005, there was this small little website made, it was called YouTube. A small but very active community of parkour athletes began sharing their videos in 2005. And very quickly, parkour became a global sensation. Cody's here to tell us what it's all about. Mwanza, they call it parkour. Some say it's a sport. As YouTube grew, so too did parkour. Video after video spread of athletes doing incredible things. And back then, no one had done any of this stuff before, so it was even more of an impact than it is now. The phrase parkour peaked in popularity in May of 2005. And this can be seen through Google search trends. And that same phrase parkour managed to stay above 66% search volume from 2006 to 2016. But then things started to change and parkour's popularity started to drop a little bit. Let's just rewind for a second. Instagram was launched in 2010. At the time, Instagram solely exists as a photo sharing platform. In roughly 2011-ish, the first parkour Instagram account started to join. So all of these very important parkour teams and personalities started to use Instagram. Prior to Instagram, the whole parkour scene focused around YouTube. In the early days of Instagram parkour, it mainly took the form of photos of parkour, which was pretty cool because at the time, photographers in parkour didn't really have a place to publish their photos. So Instagram at the time served quite a unique purpose in the parkour world. But then it all changed. The 13th of June, 2013. This date changed parkour forever. This date would mark a total shift within parkour. In June of 2013, Instagram announced that they would allow videos on their platform for the first time ever. Typically, if you were posting a video to Instagram, it was either gonna be just a throwaway flip or it was gonna be a promotion of a video that you'd put out on YouTube. But by and large, at this point, Instagram was mainly used for photos. People didn't really post videos of parkour to Instagram. And that was because filming on a phone just wasn't the done thing. And truthfully, it would have been kind of frowned upon. I'm about to paint free runners as very snobbish here, but just, you gotta bear with me, it was a different time. You see, back in 2013, filmmaking in parkour was a major thing. I'm not kidding you, we all thought we were the next Spielberg. You see, in 2013, parkour videos were really high quality, like strangely good. And that was largely due to the release of one video in particular. And that video was called Storm Volume 1. I'm definitely going to do a video going into that topic a lot deeper, so make sure you subscribe for that. But for now, I'll give you a general overview. Storm Volume 1 was an absolute game changer and totally flipped the parkour filming world on its head. Storm Volume 1 raised the level of filmmaking within parkour from like here to like here. I mean, it was, it was insane. Shortly followed, Stora started upping their video quality. Team Gestion, shout out anyone who knows who Team Gestion are. Rest in peace. I made that seem like they died. They didn't die, they just stopped making videos. So as these teams started to up their quality, so did the parkour world. And I can't begin to tell you how many bad Storm Volume 1 ripoffs there were. And I'm guilty of that as well. Pretty much every young freerunner would have saved up every penny of their pocket money until they could afford a Canon 550D. The Canon 550D was the prized possession of any freerunner. So to have spent hundreds of pounds on a good camera 
and then shoot on your phone just kind of felt like a step back. However, as phones got better and 4G data became more readily available, things started to change. The second most important date in this story is March 2016. It was in this month that Instagram's 15 second video limit was extended to one minute. As well, Instagram switched its feed from chronological to an algorithm that would show you the best posts. And this date totally changed parkour forever. Due to the new algorithm, an athlete could post a 10 second clip to Instagram and it absolutely blow up. His 10 second clip now gets hundreds of thousands of views, tons of likes and tons of new followers. If you contrast this to the numbers you would get on YouTube, at the top end, maybe you'd get 10 to 20,000 views, but most people would look at more like 2,000 to 3,000. Seeing the enticing numbers that Instagram offered, it just seemed like a no-brainer. YouTube just wasn't worth the hassle. Mathematically, YouTube just started to feel pointless. Let me give you an example. Let's say you made a three-minute parkour video. Let's say the average parkour clip length was, I don't know, five seconds long. So to make a three minute video, you need 36 clips. And let's say that that only took you three months to make. And then once all your hard work is done, you post that to YouTube and you get 3000 views. Or you film those 36 clips on a phone, post them to Instagram the same day you filmed them. And let's say each of those videos gets 1000 views. Those 36 parkour lines, instead of getting you 3000 views, now gets you 36,000 views. Can we just can we just take a moment there and appreciate I've did all those numbers? Instagram's algorithm will promote the really good clips to new people and you get a load of new followers. Next thing you know, you're Pasha the boss, you're in LA and people are doing backflips off your face. YouTube just didn't seem worth it for parkour athletes. And I know some of you may be thinking, oh bro, numbers don't matter. Do it for the love of pig hair. Yeah, you're not wrong. Of course, there needs to be a balance. But half of what makes parkour so good is the videos of the sport. It's great seeing people share videos of the sport they love. And in parkour, everyone kind of knows everyone. And when someone does something new and they film it and they post it and everyone gets excited and next thing people are doing this new thing is cool and it builds the sport up. Videos are the bedrock of how parkour grew in the first place. If David Bell never appeared in District 13 or Sebastian Foucault never made Jump London, many of your favourite athletes wouldn't be training today. If there was never videos of parkour, it wouldn't have ever got further than the guys who started the sport. Anyway, I get a little bit passionate about that one. To make matters even worse for the parkour YouTube scene, the YouTube algorithm had changed as well. In 2012, YouTube decided they wanted to compete against Netflix. And to do that, they started to promote longer videos. The videos that were doing the best were like 12 minutes long. And if you're a free runner who spent three months making a three minute video, how the hell are you gonna make 12 minute videos consistently? At this time, Instagram just made everything more simple. However, there is a catch. Despite Dom's incredible front flips, Pasha's creative movement, and parkour just generally growing on Instagram, there is one thing that's missing. Parkour's culture. You see, parkour's culture in the last few years has started to take a hit, and Instagram has had an effect on the way people make videos in parkour. One of the main downsides of Instagram's algorithm is the types of clips it promotes. I'm not saying that athletes shouldn't be pushing the boundaries of the sport, but I think when people are going out risking their lives just to film clips that are gonna go viral on Instagram, there's a problem. The more crazy, the more insane, or the more stupid, typically the better it does. The impression that the average Joe gets of parkour from Instagram is not always very accurate. Parkour kind of gets lumped in with this image of hanging off of cranes and just doing crazy things. But that isn't really what parkour as a culture is really about. The posts that do the best on Instagram are short and attention grabbing. On Instagram, there's no time for depth or backstory. People just want their attention grabbed for 10 seconds, click like, and move on. And we're all guilty of it. There's nothing really inherently wrong about it. That's just what Instagram is. People want straight to the point content on Instagram. But I wanna make it clear, I'm not talking down on Instagram. That is simply just what the platform is. 
I reached out to a few friends of mine in the parkour scene to get their opinion. That was a good one, that. Yeah. Hello, I'm Aiden. I'm Dom Tomato. My name is Keelan Ryan. So I think in the pre-Instagram days, YouTube videos, the community was so strong. You'd see Farang appear in a store video. I don't know, everyone was just, I think, so cohesive, if that's the right word. I think one of my favorite videos, Chaps on Tour 2011. Just the music and everything like that, and just the group of teenagers just hanging out with friends, you know? The videos had uh, a real cultural vibe to them where these guys would go out with a group of friends and be on a bunch of rooftops. For a kid growing up watching all those videos, I think seeing the community and seeing all the jokes and how lovely everyone is was the thing that I needed to see. Something I don't get from Instagram videos, you don't see someone's post and be like, you don't feel that real element of these people are human doesn't leave quite as big an impact. It's just shown to you so quick and then it's gone. It's almost as if Instagram is this bit of paper, it's this 2D bit of paper. It's more matter of fact, it's more this bit of paper that is like, that's what it is. Whereas YouTube, more 3D, if you like. You can really immerse yourself into it. I feel like 10K views on a YouTube video, I feel like that's a bit more lasting. Like you feel like you've actually impacted it. It's like, I've had an edit, I spent two years on it. Two years on it, you know? And it's just to hear after all that effort that you've put into something, People like it. I think Instagram has affected parkour positively and negatively. Uh, but now nah, change, is, change is something that is good. I'm only just starting to come to terms with how important it is, but a balance would be ideal. An application isn't the thing to blame. I think it's the people involved at the end of the day. You can blame it on any application or style of media or things coming out. It's down to us. We're on the, we're on the forefront of this shit. But, I mean, the only people who are going to make any difference are the people who are out here now, you know? Like, it's no worries, man. Pleasure, mate. My pleasure. Back in the days of YouTube parkour. Ah, uh, here he goes again, getting nostalgic. Back in the days of YouTube parkour, videos were remembered. From the insane parkour all the way to the inside jokes. You see, YouTube showed parkour as a whole. Like, sure, you'd get some videos that were just heavy parkour edited to some music, but at the same time, people could show their personality. Some of the most memorable moments in parkour culture were funny things that people just said off the cuff. Phil Doyle nonchalantly saying, Lash eight to Wednesday afternoon, without any thought, became an inside joke that everyone just said. Standing in the background of people's videos, showing your butt, throwing up the Storm S, all of these silly moments that athletes said off the cuff created a culture, an attitude, a humor, and a community. When we watched these videos, we felt like we knew the athletes we were watching. But from my perspective as a 25 year old who got into parkour in 2010, God, I'm getting old. I've seen the culture change and in some places lose what made parkour so vibrant in the YouTube parkour days. This video came about after having so many conversations with other freerunners about this topic, telling me that their communities had shrunk and less kids were getting into the sport. And I think it comes down to this one thing, the thing that attracts young people to getting into parkour in the first place isn't the amazing feats, the big backflips or the impressive gaps. It's the story behind all of that. When I was a young 15 year old watching Walters and Sheaf throw themselves around a gym, the thing that stood out to me wasn't just what they were doing, it was the fun they were having. I saw people who were just like me doing incredible things and having fun. Sure, at first my attention was grabbed by the big flips and the jumps, but what kept me interested and has done for 10 years was the story behind it. Look. I don't want this video to come across as like, parkour was better in my day. That's not my point here. My point is, in order for parkour to grow and attract more and more people to have the experiences we've had, we need to focus more on parkour's culture and not to only show off the incredible movements that parkour athletes do. Honestly, I'm very optimistic for parkour in 2020. The year has already started off amazingly. Stora are absolutely killing the YouTube game. And that Thamesmead video was a game changer. Farang also put out an insane team video just filled with personality and it was great. The Motors Projects are doing a video a week and they're getting just better and better each episode. And Scruffy Boys dropped a 17 minute banger. Oh my God. And it's probably my favorite video of the year so far. 
So I want this to be a positive message and I'm going to try something. It might not work, but this is what I want to try. Lately on my Instagram posts, which you can follow me on at Jimmy the Giant UK, I've been using the hashtag save your clips. I would really like if hashtag save your clips became this place on Instagram that you could go and look for other people making cool projects. So look, I'm not saying don't post parkour training to Instagram. That's not the point. I'm saying that if you're working on some cool documentary, a short film, anything, use hashtag save your clips and let's see if people use it as a place to go to find cool parkour content. Instagram is great for parkour training inspiration. However, my belief is that as parkour athletes, you shouldn't be putting your heart and soul into making incredible parkour lines for them to just get buried in an Instagram feed and forgotten forever. Tell your story to the world and make memorable content that's going to build this culture up. And vote Jimmy the Giant as Prime Minister 2020. Can I get an amen? Sorry, I got carried away. Anyway. Comment below what you think on this topic. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want to help me make more content, consider donating to my Patreon. Any contribution is deeply appreciated. And I want to thank all my existing Patreons for helping me make this video. Peace.